welcome. I'm Dana Brown. In today's tutorial, we're going to follow learning the Zojo programming language in IDE. So let's continue improving the personal expenses app that we've been building in our previous lessons. With the current version, the list box control is showing all the expenses entries as they have been entered. But wouldn't it be great to have the same entries grouped by their categories in the list box? This way, it would be easier for the user of our app to see all the expenses pertaining to a given category. In fact, this is what we've done already in the modified app that we can see here. The list box displays all of the categories having expenses entries, so when the user clicks on the associated widget, the expenses are displayed under the category in a hierarchical way. Of course, we can still click on the list box headers in order to sort the entries by their names or total values. So this is the hierarchical mode offered by the list box, being one of the multiple features available in one of the most flexible and powerful controls you can find under the Zojo library panel in the IDE. So let's see the modifications needed in the previous project in order to achieve this. In fact, we only need to follow some simple steps. The first one is selecting the list box control in the personal expenses window. And then enable the allow expandable rows option under the behavior section on the inspector panel. The second step is to select the load data method under the same window because we need to modify the code fragment involved in the loading of data from the file into the list box. We need because we need to add it to the used category names instead of the expenses names themselves. We only need to add this line of code inside the loop in charge of reading the data from the file. And we can see how the new add expandable row is used on the list box instance. This method instructs the list box to add a new row that's able to expand to show indented values when the user clicks on it or to collapse hiding those values from the list box when the user clicks on the associated widget again. Next, let's comment the line of code we've been using to add new entries to the list box instance. The next step is to add a new event handler to the list box instance. This event name is expand row. This is an event that will be fired in the list box instance every time the user clicks on the associated widget of an expandable row. The first thing our code will do here is to assign the value found in the received row to the expanded category variable. That is the cell text on the expanded row. The method we need to use for that is cell value at, passing along the required parameters, the received row value, and zero because we added the category name to the first column in the list box. Next, we're checking to see if the value is among the ones used as a key in our categorized expense dictionary. If it is, then we assign the associated value from the dictionary to the expenses entries array. Remember that the categorized expenses dictionary associates an array of expense values to a given category used in the key in the dictionary entry. Then we only need to iterate over the expenses entries array in order to add every entry as a new row belonging to the expanded item in the list box. As you can see, we're using the already known format function in order to give the desired numeric format to the amount property of the expenses entry, adding to it the second column of the list box and the concept value to the first column in the list box. So this is all the code we need for the list box to display all of the associated expenses when the user clicks on an expandable row to expand it. Now we need to change the code involved in adding new expense entries. That's because in this new version, we need to take into consideration that if a category is already expanded in the list box or not. If it is expanded, we will add the new expense to the end of the displayed entries. And if it is not, then there's no need to add it to the list box. To achieve that, we added the existing category variable. This is a Boolean variable that will let us track if the current selected category is among the ones already stored in the categorized expenses array. This would mean that we have some expense and expenses entries already in that category. If that is the case, then we set the variable value to true. The largest added fragment of code is this one. This code will deal with all of the possible scenarios. For example, if the new expense category row isn't already expanded in the list box, then it will be expanded with the new expense name added at the end. 
And if the associated expense category row is already expanded, then it will add the new expense name to the end of the already listed ones. The way this code works is as follows. In the first place, we retrieve the number of rows in the list box, assigning the value to the I variable. Next, we iterate over all of the cell values in order to see if there is a row matching the selected category name. If that is the case, then we need to see if that row is expanded already, and we call the row expanded at method for that. If the category row already expanded in the list box, then that means that it is listing the expenses, expense entries already below it. So we iterate from the current row index to the end, calling the row depth at method. If the return value is not equal to one, that is the first level of indentation, then we exit the loop because that would mean that the row is displaying a category name. Thus, the X will store the row index where we need to add to the where we need to add the new expense entry that is at the end of the already listed ones. In order to add the new row, we need to use the add row at method, where x stores the index number to insert the new row, and the last parameter one gives the level of indentation for the new entry added to the list box. Next, we call the cell value at method on the list box instance in order to add the expense value at the second column on the just added row number. But if the category row isn't expanded in the list box, then we only need to call the row expanded at method, giving the found index number to it as the parameter in order to expand that row in the list box. In that case, the expand row event handler is fired, populating the expenses entries below it in the list box. The last scenario possible is the one where we're using a new expense category. So here we simply need to add a new expandable row to the list box with the row expanded at method and calling the row expanded at method next in order to expand it on the list box. The last step is commenting the line of code we were using to add new entries to the list box in the previous version of our example app. And that's all we need to do in order to display the expenses entries grouped by category in the list box. This way, and as you can see, the expand row event handler will be in charge of populating the expenses entries when the user clicks on a collapsed row and also to hide them from the list box when the user clicks on the already expanded row. In addition, if we add a new expense entry, for example, under the clothes category, then we can see how this will be added to the end of the already disp displayed entries in the list box because the category is already expanded. And if we add a new expense entry for a category that is collapsed in the list box, then we can see how our code will expand the category row in the list box for us, displaying all of the associated expenses, including the new one. That's all. Through this tutorial, we learned some of the basics to work with hierarchical list box, including some of the methods to add expandable rows, how to detect if a given row is already expanded or collapsed, and how to check the depth or indentation level of a row, and also the event handler that is fired every time the user expands an expandable row giving us the opportunity to populate some values under it.